when we would do our date nights, <laughs> we would do our date nights, but talk about our bills or talk about, mm. you know, what's happening. It's like, no, 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 no. Teach on that. We need to leave the bills at home. We leave the work stuff at work or whatever. And we just talk about us, what we, what are, where our dreams are. Five, four, three, two, one, zero. All in. Whether you've been married one or 20 plus years, at some point, you realize you were married into crazy. And that's what our podcast is all about. We offer love, laughter, and a dose of reality as we unpack this crazy thing called marriage. So sit back, relax, and get your ear hustle on. It's time to start the conversation. All right, let's go. Yo, what's up? It's your boy, E.T. Look, if you're looking to or you got to raise the bar on your marriage, you got to you gotta click the link and get into Married in the Crazy, y'all. I'm telling you, this coaching is going to take your relationship to another level. Now, look. You already know you need to raise the bar. You know that already. So stop thinking or overthinking. Click that link. And marriage in the crazy is going to take you and your spouse to marital bliss. Now you know. Click the button. Let's go. Welcome to another episode of Married in the Crazy with Snooks and Lovey. I'm Lovey. I'm Snooks. What was that? I was trying to do opera. I'm Snooks. Okay. If I didn't do the uh, part. Yeah, well, she makes me sing on a daily basis. Oh, that's good stuff. You see that look she just gave me right now? If you're I, watching YouTube, anyway, she gave me that side eye like, what you talking about? I, I was thinking that, but then I thought, oh, he said sing. What did like, you think I said? You meant it in a good way. That's what I'm saying. Wow. She's looking for shots fired. So. Lovey, we... <laughs> <laughs> Gets me primed, ready no, to go. Lovey be throwing daggers. I was like, what? Mm -mm. Mm -mm. I'm a nice really? guy. I mean, he is a nice guy. Don't please don't ever get me wrong. But sometimes he'd be trying to, you know, you be taking shots because I'll be in the kitchen. He'll say something. I'll look at the girls. I'm like, did that just they like, yep. Or some shots. So we can't even get into the show good. And she's already like, mm. so look, folks, we want to thank each and every one of you for coming <laughs> back to the Married into Crazy podcast. As you know, we are a couple that's been married for over 25 years. Yep. Some have been married much longer than us. Some have been married much less than us. But the bottom line is we've been through some stuff. You can go back and listen to some of the podcasts. If you go back and listen to our very first one, you can tell how we were bamboozled into meeting each other. Mm -hmm. But then if you go to episode number five, you can hear about how I got stabbed and being her knight in shining armor and what transpired from there and how we almost, we, you know, what's so funny. We, all, we were never almost not getting married. Not getting married was never part of the equation. That's true. Even getting stabbed through the heart, having two open heart surgeries by her ex-boyfriend. Ooh, you're like, what? Drama. That means you got to go back and listen to the earlier podcast. We'll touch upon that story again in the near future. Um, and we didn't even talk about how, you know, year four, she was like, mm, yeah, you got stabbed, but I want a divorce. I just feel like you're like, cause she and her and all this, like, why are you? Cause you said I throw daggers. I was just trying to. Oh, okay. You were, you, okay. I feel you. I, I was just trying you. to, you know. Okay. I got you, sir. So anyway, that, that's our story. That There's a lot in between. There's a there's lot, lot there. There's more than that, but okay. There's 200 plus episodes kind of chronicling the story. And we bring in episodes uh, uh, with other couples. Like you just heard two amazing couples just recently um, that we've, we've interviewed. Mm -hmm. We had Quest. And, Plus Green and Faith. And Faith. And then and we, had, we had Chris and Nietzsche Ward. Yep. So we had them on recently. And, and there's going to be more people coming. We have a lot of interviews lined up mm -hmm. that we're going to be peppering in over the course of the next several pepper, months. Pepper, pepper, pepper. She's saucy today. <laughs> so do us a favor. Make sure you go over to Apple Podcast as well as Spotify and put five on it and leave a review. If you've loved any of the episodes, you know, let other people know. Take a picture of it and go ahead and post it on your social media and tag us. Tag at Married Into Crazy on Instagram so we can get other people out there to join the conversation as well. All right. So with that said, we need to get into the podcast. Okay. All right. So people are always asking, you know, are there different formulas? Everyone, And I'm going to tell you right now, there's a different formula for every one of the relationships that are out there as far as what makes it successful. Mm. 
I was about to say, what do you mean by formulas, though? I mean, well, I mean, because there's no specific algorithm. It's like, oh, okay, what, what do I do next? Even though we're marriage coaches. I know, but I'm saying you said people are asking what the formula, formula for what? To stay happy, stay married. To have married. a happy, healthy, wealthy, wealthy marriage. Okay. Okay. Our mantra. It is. So. Shouts out to the Muhammad's. That's going to be another episode. <laughs> a second one, follow up. But no, it's one of those things where they're like, okay, well, what is it? What, what's the secret? There is, there is no secret. The secret is the work. That's what it is. But there's also some fun. We always talk about the work that goes along with marriage. And you have to know that there's fun that has to be in that equation as well. Yeah. But, you know, it's funny. He's like, what is the secret? Sometimes the secret is right in, it's, it's in plain sight. And it's only a secret because not everyone taps into it. Mm. Does that make sense? Yep. So. Yeah, like Lovey just said, the, the secret, there is no secret, but it is the work. And it and it's the, uh, you, you have to be able to persevere, you know, because there are going to be times where you're just like, mm, I do not want to do this. <laughs> I do not want to hear her mouth. I do not want to, especially when you're trying to do your homework and your husband's asking you about food to cook and vacuuming when you're trying to. <laughs> <laughs> okay, shots fired. <laughs> that is so true. Hey, go to Instagram. We, we we put a reel out there, and our daughter captured. No, not we. Lovey did. So our daughter captured, you know, some portions of us interacting, and uh, I chopped it up, and we put a reel out, which is I thought was extremely funny. Okay, so if you know if you if you've been listening, you you all know that I'm in school. I'm getting my master's, and this has been a tough quarter. I don't know why, but I. I struggled for these last 11 weeks and I have two big assignments that were due uh, um, by Sunday. And so I, was that yesterday or was it? It was yesterday. It was yesterday. So I, I'm, I'm deep in it and here comes lovey. But my point is like, he knows, he knows how I am about my schoolwork, about my study time or whatever. And he still wants to bother me. It's so tempting. It's so tempting. It's Shots like fired, though. Okay. Just, it's just like sometimes I feel like that little kid. Like I see her, she's studying, and I know she needs to study, and I'm just looking at her like I should talk to her. Waiting for eye contact. <laughs> <laughs> I I do like this. I keep my head down. <laughs> I'll walk back and forth. And I'm like, hey, 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 look at me, look at me, <laughs> say, look at me, so I can say something. And then she don't look at me, and she does it on purpose. <laughs> So then I'm, I'm uh, then I'm really like, okay, oh, oh you gonna look at me? So anyway, just okay. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry that we got to get into this podcast. But what you were just saying, that is exactly how he used to act when we went to the grocery store together when we first got married. Oh my god, I, I was telling someone I was like, I don't even know why we used to grocery shop together. We cannot make groceries together because Lovey used to love. He still loves to talk to people. I felt like it was just like way more back then. And he would just be looking around for somebody to, <laughs> to look at him so he can have a conversation. Meanwhile, I'm on the cart like, oh my gosh, can you not talk to the people? Can you not? Because then that's going to make me have to talk to the people. See, so, we're, in a, we're in a small town. I'm trying to get to know folks. This was when we were in Sacramento. Oh, well, anyway. But I, a lot of that too is, okay, so we go to the store. We have a list. There's six things on the list. There's never been six things. Now we list. go, we get there, and now there's like 37 things in the basket. And she's going aisle to aisle to aisle. And I'm like, if I gotta be here, I'm gonna have some fun. Fun is looking at looking for stuff that we need, not talking to random people. <laughs> anyway. Snooks got mad at me one year because uh we were here just one one time we were in we're in Walmart, and it was one of the situations where we had a list of six things and she was on number 37. So I'm just walking around the store. So I started yelling, Marco. I was like, Marco. He's ridiculous. And I was like, I, she I was like, will she, not. She was trying to hide. She tried to get a I different line mm -mm. at the end because she didn't want people to know that she was with me. Um, but they knew. They knew. Yeah, we were the only two, only two black people in town. They knew. So, they knew. And no. they thought it was the funniest thing. Oh, the rest of it. I was like, mm -mm, it's not funny to me. But what's funny is that Snooks never once said polo. Why would I? But a bunch I'm of other people in the store did. <laughs> that was fun. Yeah, mm -hmm. that was the last time we went shopping together, I think, too. Pretty close. But anyway, so getting into the, see, here, here's what I'm talking about. 
you got to have fun like that. Snooks tolerates me so I can actually do those things, but it's fun. And, and, it, and it adds a little bit of color, adds a little bit of life to the relationship. Yes, marriage is all about work. It, you got to put that work in. Anybody that's going to tell you otherwise is wrong, but you also got to have fun. I'm like, yeah, it's not all just all about work because work is sometimes works fun, but works work. I it, mean, it is okay. and, and make no doubt about it. Marriage is too. Marriage can be fun, is fun, is worthwhile. You make it fun. It's worthwhile. But you got to make it. And so there's different ways. And when they're talking about, is there a formula? Is there a secret to having a, a you know, a long lasting, happy, healthy, wealthy marriage? Uh, the secret is find a way to make it work and have some fun in doing it. And we came across this article, uh, a friend of mine, uh, Chris Taylor, actually, uh, it's a long time friend, we went to high school together, uh, retired police officer, great guy. And Chris sent me an article, says, hey, have you ever seen this before? He goes, I read this article and didn't even realize that my wife and I have been doing this for as long as we've been married. And I think they've been married like 28 years, not longer. He, he and his wife got married. Chris and Aaron got married really early. Um, but anyway, they um, they do this. And he says, we've been doing this because what I thought was interesting. So we forwarded it on to me. And of course, I sent it to Snooks. Mm -hmm. So it's called the 222 method. How many people are familiar with that? Raise your hands. <laughs> if you're driving your car, only raise one hand, please. Um, but can you want to break down what the 222 is? Or just nod your head. So the 222 rule basically is um, two people couple <laughs> every two um they say every two weeks they go out on a date night on a date night every two months they take a weekend two days and every two years they take a week right right yeah so, so go, go ahead, ahead. <laughs> wow go ahead no i was just saying kind of like uh to chris's point we emulate some of that you know um Maybe not the week every two years, but we make sure that we get our, our date nights in as much as school will allow. We, we, I kind of want to say we, we emphasize the two, the two weeks that we, that were, that I'm off from school. We kind of make sure that we're, we're constantly uh, moving during that time. But prior to that, we, we pretty much, we were regular with our date nights and I don't know about the weekend stuff though. Not really, it, it, but it, not it's not as consistent, but it leaves it nice. As long as we've been married for 25 years and been together 26. And it's, it's interesting because it's like, Oh, okay. We need to try that. You can't have that attitude. Like, oh, okay. You know what? I, I like doing what I do and that's it. And this is good. And it's working. Got to be open to change. So I'm really open to for the remainder of, this year it, we just entered august but for the remainder of this year to really work on the two 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 or at least the two two um actually we can do the two 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 because we're getting ready to go on a trip for I was a week about to say well we're going on our, our our week trip already we just had a date night does that count with the grandkids first of all that was not a date night if the grandkids came that's true okay. so i don't know what you're thinking i need a definition somebody define date night no so, <laughs> no, but we do need another date night. And it's funny. It's like, we're, we're not really going to have a date night per se in these two weeks because we're going to be gone for a week. Well, and then, you know, even for the two months to get away, eh, that's going to be a little bit of a push because for a weekend, yeah. um, with school for me, number one. And then even when we come back from our vacation, I have to start my internship, which is going to take up a weekend not a whole whole weekend but that friday and saturday so whatever so, we do pay attention i hope you're taking notes so here we are this is real life real time talking about oh how do we implement the 222 and you can hear right now that we actually we have obstacles we have challenges that are going to allow us but do we abandon the entire thing no that's stupid we're just going to get rid of it but we need to figure out a way to implement it as best we can in our lives and see that's what we're telling you is that when you get advice from other couples, if you are some of our clients, we, we are starting to coach more and more clients, um, which is exciting. Um, we love that, you know, the book is getting filled. If you look at our calendar, it's getting filled up. 
Um, if you are interested in actually becoming a client or at least getting some coaching, make sure you go to marriedintocrazy.com. On that site alone, it's a very, um, what I want to say, it's a, the, the, the website runs very deep. It's very eclectic. There's a lot that's there. You On marriedintocrazy.com, you will find our clothing line. Um, you will find coaching. You'll find an ebook, a very simple um, relationship audit that you'll be able to do. It's in the form of an ebook. It's great. It's, it's real inexpensive. It's under $10 to get. You also have access to our calendar when it comes to coaching and raise the bar like ET was talking about. So there's a lot there. Go to marriedintocrazy.com and you can see all these different things. But with everything that Snooks was just talking about, we still got to figure out a way to implement it. Mm, yeah. Right? You're going to say, oh, but, you know, the kids, oh, but uh, we got the job. I mean, you just heard it real time right here. She was like, okay, I got school. We're not going to be able to do this, but we will be able to do this. And you know what? Get in where you fit in. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Do the thing that makes sense for you and your spouse. I did that on purpose. I had nothing to say. She opened her mouth like <laughs> she was going to talk. So I jumped in there. What I got to go through. Wow. Now I forgot what I was going to say. So I'm just kidding. No, I was just kind of going to just piggyback off of you. Don't, um, because you don't have the time, you have to improvise too. So maybe you're, if you can't get away for a whole weekend, some people do staycations, mm. you know, um, there are just things that you have to improvise because your marriage, your relationship is a priority and you want to make sure that you're treating it as such. I feel like so many times we treat so many other things as priority. I'm very bad at that. Not and I, as far as like, cause school's priority and, and we all get that. Oh, I get it to school, but I can't make it just be the end all like, Oh, nope. As soon as I get up, I got to go do schoolwork. And I'm notorious for on the weekends, I'll get up out of bed. I'll roll up, uh, maybe have some breakfast. Most of the time, not, but I'm deep embedded in my schoolwork and I forget sometimes about, oh, let me check in with love and I'll come up for air sometimes or he'll come in he'd be like, hey, just checking on you. You good, blah, 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 whatever. He's very good at that. But if our relationship is going to be a priority, if we say our relationship, I'm sorry, if we say our relationship is a priority, let it really be a priority and not just lip service because a lot of times we say a lot of things, you know, and it ends up being lip service. So that's truth. You know, and how do you know, how do you really know if your relationship is a priority? Same thing. I always say, follow the money. You know, <laughs> you do. It's just like every one of those cop shows out there, you know, and these different CSI type shows or whatever, anything that's dealing Why with forensics. Why are you watching CSI like that so much though? Uh, it, it, never mind the Amazon order for a bunch of bleach and lye. I found some gloves and uh <laughs> No. Um, but what's funny is that when you watch those shows, they say, okay, follow the money. Let's let's get to the bank, let's follow the money. And, and it, even if you follow the money in your life, a lot of times people place an enormous amount of um uh, emphasis, importance on money. Money is a great tool, but where we spend it is what's most important to us. And if you look, how much of your money is actually going towards entertainment? You know, to that mind numbing stuff. And I'm not going to I'm not going to sit here and entertainment shame anybody or, you know, cable TV shame anyone. Or whatever. But how Strip much of that, how much of your money is anyone. being spent on? But look at it. How much is being spent on a date night or anything that's related to strengthening, augmenting your relationship, augmenting your relationship, augmenting your marriage? That's good, because a lot of times. You know, people will say, oh, I don't have money for that. Oh, oh that restaurant's too expensive. Oh, girl, you know, we can't afford and I could do blah, 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 whatever. You know, we want to we want to homegrown, homegrown our relationship, our date nights, our whatever it is with our partners. But let the boys call. I, I, I know I sound like I'm picking on the men, but then you got all the money in the world that you need. Like, bro, I, got these, I got these tickets to see the Niners. I got these tickets to see the Raiders. Oh, how much are they? Well, it was like two fifty. Uh, like that's right. You're like, where the seats at? And then he's like, oh, okay. Two. Cause so you, you, you deem it worthy. Right. You'll, you're exactly. You'll drop two fifty on some tickets. Then when you get there, you know, the beers are like 16 bucks each. I was each. About to say that, well, there's parking. 
like you said, you're going to drink beer. You're going to have more than one. It may be hot dog or whatever it is that you eat. Minimum. You're spending three hundred dollars. You're not even getting a that's hotel in the stadium. Right. That's just in the stadium. Mm -hmm. Right. That's not Tickets, what the tickets food, for. all that. So let's just Parking say it's 50 bucks. So when you get in there and you I'm do all that. But then when your wife says or when your husband says, when your significant other says, hey, I'd like to go to a marriage conference or I'd like to go to this marriage retreat. How much is it? Or I saw this thing that would be really great for our relationship so we can take it to the next level, like raise the bar. And you say, oh, I'm not going to spend, you know, X, Y, Z. $500. What? You better get out of here with that. Mm -hmm. But then you turn around and say, ooh, the new Jordans just dropped. Right? So you're looking at your shoes that drop that are going to that are going to depreciate. Your marriage should never depreciate. Your marriage should only appreciate and get stronger every year. But it doesn't do that without some maintenance. And that maintenance does cost. It's an investment. Mm -hmm. What you're putting on your feet, unless, now, it's one thing, if you're going to buy the new Jordans that drop, you're going to turn around and resell them, and it's a business model, versus, I'm going to look fly, I'm going to get them, I'm going to put them on, I'm going to get out. As I go to the game, then I'm spending $250 on the tickets, and $16 a beer, and $32 for a pretzel with some cheese on it. and <laughs> On the side. Was right, you know, but I mean, you, you, get, you get my point. Follow the money, and you'll see what's important to you. And if you truly are saying that your marriage is important to you, then invest. Invest. Find out where you're spending your time. So when you look at your bank account, is it being spent on a date night every two weeks? Is it being spent on a weekend every other month? Are you spending a week with each other away from the kids, not your family vacation with all the children, mm -hmm. a week vacation with just the two of you to unplug from the world and plug into each other? Mm -hmm. Are you spending that time? Are you taking time to go to a website like marriedintocrazy.com and then looking at raise the bar, learning how you can raise the bar in your marriage? Or are you going to other sites to improve your marriage? We're, bring, we're going to be bringing on some other marriage coaches. So it's not, we just did. Quest and Faith. Quest has a phenomenal program. Now, I'm not trying to... The greenhouse? Yep, the greenhouse is phenomenal. And I'm not saying, oh, go do everybody else's. But I am saying... There's opportunities. There's resources. If we're not your flavor, you like the podcast, but you're like, ah, I don't know if I want to talk to them. There's other resources. We're here for the covenant of marriage. We would love to be the shepherd, if you will, to help you and nudge you and teach you and, and walk through the fire with you, so to speak. But in the, if there's other people, use that. Anyway, first of all, I know you're shame. Why would you not want to talk to us? <laughs> <laughs> right? Yeah. What she said. I'm just playing. No, but we're going to be bringing in other marriage coaches. There's there's a plethora of people that I want to bring through um, the organization, through our podcast, to introduce you to, so we can help lift your marriage. If not with us, then definitely somebody else. But it all comes back to your philosophy. Are you willing to invest in you? Mm. E.T. has a book coming out the week of September 13th. I'm going to plug it time and time and time again between now and then. You can go on... Uh, Amazon right now and look up a book called You Owe You. And I think it's a very valid thing. Um, you Owe You. Um, I actually did a plug. I have to release it um, where I did a little thing for ET where I was just talking about it. I think you and your spouse should both go get You Owe You. We might even get the, well, we have our books coming, um, but we're going to get it and then read it together and then talk about it. But you owe your marriage the investment of Every other week, a date night. Every two months, just a little weekend getaway. Mm -hmm. Every two years. Every, I said every two years, not every year. But if you can do it every year, fantastic. But I'm like, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm shooting for every year. So. Amen. But every two years at the minimum, get away. And I'm not saying you got to go to some super extravagant, expensive place. Mm -mm. You can be like, you know, there's a spot that's not far from home, you know, that I just want to, we just want to get a hotel. We're going to kick it and go see the sights. We don't got to wait for family to come into town to take them to all the beautiful places out here that we never go to. Why do we do that? Do you, do, you, do you notice that? I mean, I that that is really something that we do. We talk, we, oh yeah, I'm coming to, oh, there's these places that we could go and, but we don't. I know why. I know why. Because why? we don't want to spend the money on ourselves. We're so, we're so focused on the minutiae of life that we, 
you know, so, but when it's like, we're looking for an excuse, we need permission to go and splurge, if you will, or spend some time and go do things. And we need to get out of that. You know, so we have to wait for our family to come all the way across the country to go see a place an hour and 10 minutes away. Well, I'm giving you all permission to splurge. Seriously. If you need permission, we just gave it to you. Snooks hey, just told you. I just told you. Go do it. She said, go go have fun. Go have fun. But I really, mean, but like but like you said though, I mean, because and we're we're not making light of the situ of, of the uh the monetary um situation. Some people just do not have the money to do like, oh, I want to go do this big thing or whatever. And I promise you, we get that because we've been that couple where we wanted to do the big thing, but we couldn't afford to do that. But just because you can't do that doesn't mean that you, you shouldn't do anything. Um, do something because doing something shows that I do care. I am investing what it is that I have. It's like, um, and you know, and I, I, just, this is the only thing that I could really think of. Um, the uh, in the Bible, the widow's might. She was a widow. She only had a penny, and you know, you had all these people. These they had money, and they were given a portion or a little bit of whatever, and she gave just a penny. And the Lord made a b a big deal about it. And other people were like, well, she, all she gave was a penny, but and so. We gave all this and, but he was like, cause she gave all she had, mm. you know? So it may not be something that you can go and do big, big, but don't let the fact that you can't go big, make you go home. You got to go just do something, you know, mm. go do something. How? A widow's might date night. A widow's might date night. Let me and I used to walk, um, every night. Right. Mm -hmm. And there was one couple I used to get a kick out of them. They were an older couple and they would be walking and they they always held hands. I'm a hand holder. If we're going some, you better hold my hand. I think I said that before, but I love to hold hands. That makes me feel special, you know, and they were just they would just walk. And that was kind of like their little date thing or whatever. And it's like, OK, I see y'all, you know, it doesn't take much investing. That regardless of where you are in life it's about the time the one thing that god has given each and every one of us is the same 24 hours the same 24 hours we may not have the same bank accounts but we got the same time and the only present that our spouses truly want is our presence mm -hmm. so okay she she always refused I want that. presence no she said, i want them both i want it with a t and i want it with a c um but I'm kidding you can take a blanket in the backyard or if you don't have a backyard, you can take a blanket to the park and you can do a picnic and you're just unplugging and just chilling. Mm -hmm. That's a date. You can go and say, you know, let's go get some ice cream and just, just, go sit just go sit in the park and just talk. That's a date. Oh, away from everything. And, and, you, and let's let's be clear too. a lot of times. I, I feel like in the beginning when we would do our date nights, <laughs> we would do our date nights, but talk about our bills or talk about, mm. you know what's happening is like no 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 Teach on that. we need to leave the bills at home we leave the work stuff at work or whatever and we just talk about us what we what are where our dreams are um what our goals are we need to start remembering those type of things and some people might be like well if i don't have we're not talking about work we're not talking about bills or the kids then what are we going to talk about it's like well it's time for you to rediscover that you know and and I'm sorry if if you are one of those people who think that, well, what are we going to talk about if we're not talking about the the house stuff, then <laughs> yeah, you really need the date night. You really need to get away. You really need to unplug because when the job is gone, when the work stuff is, or, you know, the kids are gone, it's just going to be the two of you, you know, in a sense, it's funny because I feel like we're like empty nesters, but our kids still live here. But I say empty nesters in the sense that we don't have to worry about them. I I, I promise you, I come home sometimes. They be like, mom, uh, what's for dinner? I'm like, I don't have to feed you. I do not have to feed y'all. She said that. I, I have said, <laughs> she said one time. She said it to me. I don't have to feed y'all. You're, you're old enough now. So when you want food, you know how to get it. 
or you know how to make it or whatever it is. We don't have to worry about any of their little stuff that they have going on. Yeah, we're still here. We're still parents. But I, in a sense, I almost feel like, you know, we're empty nesters and we spend time talking about us, what our dreams are, where we want to go, what do we want to do and vacations and, you know, just just things that pertain to us. And you have to be able to have those conversations and, and just get back to when it just was the two of you, even if you only got 10 minutes to do it. And that's the other thing. Date night doesn't have to take up four or five hours. You know, it's not like that at all. It could be date hour. I was talking to someone the other day and one of our clients and just talking about how just do something completely off the wall different. Spouse wants to go dancing more. That doesn't mean you got to go to the club. You can do like, there's like an Arthur Murray school of dance or whatever. Go take a dance lesson. Mm -hmm. those are fun we used to do those. it's only like 30 45 minutes and it's just, it is it's a lot of fun and it's, it's completely a lot different of fun. you get, get beyond like the embarrassment and all that because everybody else in the room seems to know what they're doing but just take like a little dance lesson and it's fun and then you go grab a bite to eat and then guess what now you got something to talk about you get to laugh and reflect on mm -hmm. what you just went through and because you know, you went left, but she went right. And you, you know, you was off beat or whatever. It was just one of those things that just something that it creates memories. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So there's so much that you can actually do, but that two, two, two is so important. And I, and I want to thank Chris Taylor for actually bringing it to my attention because it got us talking at the very minimum. It's a conversation mm -hmm. about, well, what do we do? What, how can we improve? Right. How can we improve? Because, you know, we talk, we talked before about the checkup. You know, I was like, oh, that's like the checkup on steroids, you know, because yeah. there's actually a succinct plan to this is what we're going to do. This is we already know. OK, it's coming up, you know, so something to look forward to. Yeah. The last plug we're going to do for the evening is she mentioned the checkup. But you know what? Give your relationship an audit. If you're like, I don't know if we can do this. There's nothing wrong with doing an audit on your relationship. Mm. And you can go to marriedintocracy.com and just scroll down towards the bottom of the page. You'll actually see an opportunity to do a relationship audit and for less than ten dollars you can actually get this electronic you'll, you'll get a download and everything where it, it's actually gonna be great you can actually electronically check off some items to where you can see how crazy your relationship is yeah. you can see how compassionate real accountable zealous and yielding your relationship truly is and then make some adjustments right and the 222 is going to be one of those great uh, remedies if you will or prescriptions for whatever might either be ailing you or that can actually get you to that next level. Right. So that's it. So give it a try. Have a conversation this week. And that's your call to, to action. Have a conversation about how can we implement this 222 concept into our lives? And if you're already doing something similar to it or doing the exact same thing, how can you make it better? Yeah. And you know what? Um, after you guys do your little audit or you talk about it, let us know what you what you plan on doing on um, our Facebook Iron Tribe Marriage Community. Yep, actually, yeah, go to Facebook, look up Iron Tribe, the marriage community, and just join. It's a free Facebook community where we have couples that will interact with each other from time to time, just talking about the different things. And we're going to pose that as a question, you know, just asking, what do you do for rest and relaxation? How often do you go on date nights? What does that look like? Have you heard of the 222? Those kinds of things. And, you know, and we'll report back what people say within Iron Tribe, but we would m really love to have your input on that same page. Mm -hmm. It's just something that you just said. I don't know why it just clicked for me like that. But, you know, one thing that we we talk we talk heavily about and just work and, you know, our employers and whatever self-care, you know. So as much as you individually need self-care, your relationship needs self-care also. So. The two 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 plan checkup. That's that's self care for your relationship. So you want to make sure that you're implementing self care. Yep, exactly. All right, y'all. Until the next All time. All right, y'all. Be Til blessed. The next time, be blessed. Bye bye.